Hey, welcome back to the 3M plus 1 problem. This is episode 17, which reminds me of moving from the south to the north because I did that when I was 17. I was like, whoa. It also reminds me of the 3N minus 1 loop we found in an earlier episode where the bottom member of that loop was 17. This loop goes up, then down, then up, then down. So it's not a circuit loop like this one, which goes up x number of times and then comes down k minus x number of times. If m is an integer, then we got a valid circuit loop. And we're trying to prove that no circuit loops exist, which amazingly boils down to showing 2 to the k minus x minus 1 is never a multiple of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x for any k and x. When we look at lots of values for k and x, we find that not only does this never seem to be a multiple of that, it actually always seems to be smaller than that. And last time we had a pretty good proof. Here, 2 to the 10 minus 6 minus 1 is only 15, which is way smaller than 2 to the 10th minus 3 to the 6th, or 295. In fact, if we factor the 295, we can prove that the 15 is smaller than even just this piece of the 295 underlined in red. And this proof works whenever x and k are even, like here. But all hell breaks loose when x or k are odd. Okay, so to make a valid loop, we need this to be bigger than this. And we want this bigger than zero, so our loop will contain positive integers instead of negative ones. Okay, let's rearrange the terms to put 2 to the k minus x in the middle. And to make a loop, 2 to the k minus x has to be an integer that squeezes in between these two things. And now we could be even more aggressive and try to show that no integer a squeezes in between these two things for any x. So let's look at some values of x. If x is bigger than 2, you can see these two things share the same integer part, like 3 here, 5 here, 7 here, 3,325 here. There's no way to squeeze an integer a in between those two things. And if this keeps up, then we'll know that there are no valid circuit loops. And as x gets bigger, these two things get closer and closer. That's because a gazillion over a billion is about the same as a gazillion over a billion minus one. We can think of it this way. For each value of x, we get to shoot a gun at the number line. At first, the bullet's really wide, like caliber 1.5. It's easy to squeeze an integer in between. The bullet can't help but hit some integer tick mark. In fact, uh, this x equals 1 corresponds to our favorite loop, 1, 2, 1. But as x increases, the caliber of the bullet gets smaller and smaller. For x equals 2, we just graze an integer tick mark. For x equals 3, we miss. For x equals 4, we almost hit 5, but we miss. And for x equals 5, we miss again. By the time we get to x equals 20, the bullet we're shooting is microscopic, very unlikely to hit an integer tick mark. Of course, that's just probability talk, heuristics for babies. As adults, we want an airtight proof that no bullet will ever hit. We're basically asking whether the integer parts of these two things are always going to be equal for every x from 3 to infinity. So this is kind of cool because we've reduced the 3n plus 1 circuit problem to such a simple statement about a single variable x. Unfortunately, we've reduced the 3n plus 1 problem to another famous unsolved conjecture in mathematics. Yeah, nobody knows about this one either. So that's pretty funny. Okay, so there's two things we can do at this point. First, we can be less aggressive back at this step. We can't yet prove that no integer will squeeze in here, but with Baker's heavy artillery, we could prove that no power of 2 will squeeze in here. Or we can back all the way up. We want to know if this is a multiple of that, right? We said, well, let's just show that this isn't even bigger than that. So we got ourselves into 3 to the x over 2 to the x and fractions like that. If we want to know whether this is a multiple of that, maybe we stop calculating the magnitudes of these two numbers and start figuring on whether they're divisible or not. So if we bring back our numerology chart, where we've got a cell for every 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, and a column for every value of k minus x, we can ask, like, is 23 times 89 a multiple of anything in this infinite column? 
Now we're back to talking about integers and prime factors and divisibility. So let's follow up on that next time. See you then.